They've camped outside to get an Apple product. They slept in a damned tent outside the building to be the first in line to get a completely overpriced computer product from Apple. Why? Because it was new and they wanted, to, they wanted to be the first to try it. They wanted the status of like, you know, being the cool, you know, who got the first iPhone 9 or whatever the hell it is, right? Mm -hmm. I don't even know all of Apple's products. Branding is part of the way you get there. Now, what did Frank do with his heroin? Because it came in bricks, they broke it in little envelopes. Some people sell heroin in little balloons. Put it on a trademark on it. Yeah, he put a mark on it. Why? Stand out from other competition. Other competition had marks on theirs. And yeah, they had little. So it had like little little logos or stickers. Or something. Uh, uh, ecstasy tablets. Have you seen ecstasy tablets that have printed like a Mitsubishi logo or stuff on it? Yeah, branding, right? That branding process. In the film, uh, Frank goes and talks to Nookie. Nookie Barnes. Nookie Barnes was uptown, New York gangster, okay? He was super fly, basically. He went to Nookie Barnes because Nookie Barnes was taking a similar packaging and replicating his logo. And Frank, in a, in a legal market, was like, hey, Nookie, I'll kill you if you do that again, <laughs> basically. Because there's no, there, it's illegal, right? How do you enforce stuff when there's no law? Plata or plomo? Silver or lead? That's how. Pablo Escobar. So the thing is, from a branding perspective, will people pay more for a brand? Yeah. If they think it's worth it. Now, is CrossFit more expensive to train in consistently than other forms of like gyms, exercise, whatever? Why do people pay more? Is it better than the competition? Is it more effective than the competition? It's like, but CrossFitters get a sense of status out of what they do. What Wendy wants to do with my brand is she wants to make it palatable to spas. And I'm like, no, let's build a better brand and get Spartans. Let's get the CrossFitters and get them so rabid about it, so different. Well, it's, no, it's not even a size, it's on a mat. Suspension system, deep compressions, right? That process is more challenging when you have to slowly walk the audience into this. I think part of the way you do this is you don't even have to change anything now because you're gonna have to deal with Michelle, you gotta deal with the infrastructure, you gotta deal, what you do is you start doing this. And this is gonna set you apart. You're not gonna make money off this initially, but you're gonna build a stronger brand. How did you guys find out about this class? Email. Email, from Dina? No, just what? a subscription I have. What subscription? No idea. I just got it through the school after I graduated. Oh, okay. So you get an email from the school. Not this school. Another school. Just a school. They just send out. I think it's like CEs in the state. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the Arkansas State Board sent something out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How many of you knew about me before we showed up today? How did you know about me, Ashley? Uh, YouTube videos. YouTube videos. You blow up your news feed. Yeah. When did you follow me? What do you follow me on? Massage entrepreneurs? Wellness, like, the, I guess your business wellness. Page. Robert Gardner Wellness, which is my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And? Or is that basically it? I think that's it. Okay. Why did I start Massage Entrepreneurs? It's got almost 13,000 members now. I have a product that's better than the competition. It's more effective than the competition. What I could do is massage therapists didn't just have a bodywork problem. They had a business problem. And I said, Ashley, I'll give you free business information. How do you feel about free, Ashley? How do you feel about free video? That's how I made money off your class today. Because if I can continually, Cameron, give them free information, continually engage you in my story, I'm going to make money, and I'm going to be able to travel, and I'm going to keep working, and I can make more video, and I can keep talking to people, and I can make more classes, and I can get educated on different topics. Make sense? That process builds a brand. When I build trust with the audience because Frank's heroin was cleaner, it was pure, it was better, it was branded, the junkies would go back to that same dealer again and again and again and again because now you're addicted to it. You have to have the heroin or you get sick. You, know, you don't want to get dope sick. So 
You build a brand, it's how you charge more. Why do people pay more for CrossFit? There's a lot of stuff. They perceive it to be better. Now, can you create that in the marketplace? Are Nikes necessarily better than Adidas? No. Are they better than Reebok? No. What? They see it as Listen, I wear Nikes. I know these make me jump higher and run faster. Yeah. I know that. No. My Adidas makes me run faster. Oh. Branding. Now, in our industry right now, we talked about this. We want, we're about to get back to the body work. <sighs> what brands do we have? This is where I get real critical. It's why I get excited about these conversations. Massage Envy. Massage Envy. What does Massage Envy's brand stand for? Cheap Massage. Yeah. Cheap Massage. Now, what does McDonald's stand for? Cheap Burgers. Cheap Burgers. Now, how is McDonald's losing now? Like well, they have competition now. Oh. They have Starbucks. to serve them fancier coffee. Was, Other people interested in health, let's serve them a salad. People interested in like different kinds of burgers, so we'll change we'll change a crazy burger on our menu. Do you see how they're playing defense mm -hmm. instead of focusing on what they're really good at? Right. Yeah. Like you don't have to do this and then try to justify why you don't charge these prices. You're like, well, this is what we do. We do CrossFit. This ain't working out. This is CrossFit. This is a brand, right? Mm -hmm. Massage Envy is the McDonald's of our industry. And all the spas and facilities are losing. Why? Because they're trying to compete with. They're selling area. a commodity instead of building a better brand. Why did stretch facilities? Because they figured out one, they could do it legally. Why did stretch facilities start popping up? Because Massage Envy started their Thermal Body Stretch program and they wanted to. When people go to a stretch program, are they looking for a massage or are they more likely like athletes? Athletes. Ah. So the active people who want somebody else to help them with their athletics, they want to be stretched, not just a massage, so we don't have to worry about the license. And now stretch facilities start popping up. How does Massage Envy respond? Straight to our stretch service they're playing defense. Instead of entrepreneuring and adding stretch services for athletes and marketing that, they've changed the branding. Massage Envy, McDonald's, is a big, big facility. It's got a host of different issues to like deal with. Because we're not talking about one Massage Envy, we're talking about the largest supplier of massage in the United States. Also the largest employer of massage therapists in the United States. What other brands are there? Levita. Levita. Massage Heights. Massage Heights. Eight ten. Okay, with those, what's the difference between these guys and Massage Envy? The name. They're they're because they're attempting to build a brand. From the outside, I have no idea. I don't know any. I don't know those facilities at all, and I don't know what they offer. Now, I can tell you what I would do in a facility. Are you ready? So, we filed a trademark for Reboot. Let's say we got that trademark. I was going to eventually open a Reboot studio. There's no private room in a Reboot studio. There is no massage offered. It is one large open room. The scheduling is done online. Because the sessions are three hours, we're only going to see two clients a day. And how do you feel? Let's see. We're going to raise the fee. It's going to be three hundred dollars a session. Um, how do you feel about making three hundred dollars a day doing the stuff I'm teaching on a mat? Now, if I can pay you consistently, if I can pay you three hundred dollars a day, will you work for me or Massage Envy? Okay. What is going to happen is the therapist would be lined up outside begging to get a job. And I'm like, hold on. It'll be like Studio 54 and I get to pick who comes in. Now, will consumers pay 300 a session? If it's good quality, yes. Okay. So now we have a completely open floor plan. Looks like a yoga studio, except I've got suspension system set up. Cameron can work on someone and their clients can see all the other clients being worked on. Everyone is clothed. We're not really delivering what the consumer thinks of as massage, but it increases mobility, it reduces pain. 
The sessions are long. It's a violation at all. Why? Because you're like pretty much, I don't know, I feel like massage is a private thing. Okay. It makes it sound like it has to be so private. So how is working openly on an open floor, how is that okay? You can have each individual therapist go over the person's chart and talk with them. But how do people feel about getting a, a massage in public? They're a little weird about it. Yeah. Now, do the CrossFitters want to do workout in private, or do they want other people to see how cool they are? I want people to see. I want people to see how cool they are. No, nah, we don't get a massage. We go get the reboot at the reboot studio. Cameron is my therapist. Because now you're the cool kid, mm -hmm. and now you get to see Cameron on his suspension system. And then I... Ever, everybody sign a waiver and I'm making video. Does that look like Massage Envy? No. Can Massage Envy even remotely begin to even come close to competing with me? Because I'll be doing all of this too. I'll be doing all the email, video, and streamlining the process because I'm offering a different service. Now, Massage Envy, if they decide to play defense and they want to do this, are they going to be able to replicate it? I have a product that's better than the competition, it's cheaper than the competition, it's more effective than the competition. Multipliers. Multipliers. It's not for everybody, by the way. Can everybody afford, and this is what I hear from therapists, they're like, dude, your fees are so high, nobody can afford it. And I'm like, oh, guess where we run the time massage jam? Out of the reboot studio. Because the, the time massage jam is a free community giveaway. Listen. If you can't quite afford it, we also, on Sundays, we have a discount day where we try to work with people on fees and sometimes do a little bit shorter session because we understand people are in need. I'm very, as an owner, you know, of the Reboot Studio, I was in chronic pain. I understand what it's like to want help. We also teach little classes. We have yoga classes. It's an open floor plan. We have acro yoga events and other dance movement related events, mobility coaches coming in that's rolled into the Reboot Studio. Now, you know when I'll open that, Jake? Are you ready? I need a product that's better than the competition, cheaper than the competition. I'm going to do it when I can own the shopping center. I'm going to wait until I have enough money to buy the shopping center. Why? So there's a, sh there's a shopping center. So you can get as many people in there as possible? And the shopping center is broken into units. And I know this doesn't look like the floor plan of what a shopping center would look like. So all these facilities are rented out. There's a sandwich shop, a subway, there's a nail salon. All these things are rented. Here's where a reboot studio is. What am I doing with all these people's rent? It pays for my facility. And you know where all the extra money goes? And into this. Because that means you're in real estate. You know why McDonald's is worth so much? It has so many properties. Real estate. Do you guys ever watch The Founder? Yeah. I love this shit. I, dude, I eat this shit for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I love this shit. I love having these conversations. I'm all fire having this discussion. Ray Kroc sold milkshake machines. He couldn't even sell the damn things because the facilities could, didn't have enough customers to be able to make the milkshakes eight at a time or whatever. And Ray Kroc was like, no, but if you can easily, quickly produce milkshakes, they'll buy more of them. Then he gets a phone call from the McDonald's brothers. Yeah, we want, give us five of them. And he's like, so why what? are they always broke? McDonald's? Yeah. Oh, well, hold on. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Ever. milkshake, the milkshake <laughs> machine. Oh, that's what this was. <laughs> so Ray Kroc literally thinks it's an error, like thinks there, there was there was a mix up in the message, and like talks to one of the McDonald's brothers, and they're no, we need five of them or whatever obscene number it was. He literally gets in his car in the Midwest, drives to California to the original McDonald's. He walks up to the counter. There's no car hops. They don't come and serve you. They got rid of the employees. Is it more effective than the competition? Is it better than? They changed the model, right? They had structurally designed the kitchen 
to mass produce hamburgers at a faster rate of speed, meaning fast food, than other facilities. They literally looked at the goddamn floor plan to change the structure to make it more effective to more quickly get the people their food. Ray Kroc says, hey, I want a hamburger, fry, and a drink. He's like, yeah, it's a quarter. He puts a quarter down. The guy takes it, turns around. Here's your food. And he's like, well, no, I just ordered it. And he's like, yeah, there it is. They had changed the model. So Ray Kroc said, listen, this shit works. Franchise. Franchise. You guys run your store. Let me franchise it. They got into bed together legally. Ray Kroc's making like a penny off a hamburger sale. It's not a lot of money. Talks to another guy and he says, real estate. You're looking at the business model wrong. What I want you to do is I want you to go in and I want you to buy the land and then lease the land to the franchisee. You're not in the hamburger business, you're in the real estate business. Ray Kroc made enough money legally inside the McDonald's Brothers industry where he eventually bought them out. McDonald's is one of the largest landholders in the United States. I think maybe along with Walmart, because Walmart has physical facilities as well. Does, does Walmart rent the land they're on or buy it? I'm pretty sure they buy it, because now they have real estate holdings. Do you see the difference? And I know that was a long-winded. I know that's going to be hard for some of you to follow. Maybe you're not completely interested in it. Watch it again and go over it. I've thought about this shit and thought about this shit and thought about this shit. The offer that I have right now in Austin are their massage facilities who want me to open a reboot studio. <coughs> are there yoga studios that want me to open a reboot studio inside their yoga facility? <coughs> Why? They, they can't see it. They lack vision and I'm gonna fucking do it eventually. I am not going to fucking stop. I sell these recordings. People pay me seven bucks a month many, many times over. People will be subscribed for years. Years from now, I will continue documenting everything I do. Something is eventually going to crack because the right person will get wind. They will understand what I'm looking at and they're like, holy shit, this guy's trying to innovate an industry. What do Soothe and Zeal do? Soothe, seal. Do you guys have those apps here? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> Holy shit. You don't know about Soothe and Zeal? No. Soothe and Zeal are the Uber of massage. And you get on their app and you request a massage therapist come to your home and give you the session. But Soothe takes care of the business. Soothe gets you the client. Soothe takes care of the payment. All you do is show up and give the massage. How do you feel about that? easy, but I'm probably not making as much as I should be. You make more per hour working for Soothe or Zeal than you will working at a spa. They'll pay you more. Well, that sounds nice. <laughs> so you make more money. How do you feel about getting in your car and driving around town? A lot of therapists I find, they'll work at a place like Massage Envy, but they'll pick up extra clients on Soothe or Zeal. How are Soothe and Zeal making money? They take a percentage. What do they not have to deal with? The people. There's no physical facility. Yeah. They don't have the overhead of a spa. Now, why did Massage Envy not come out with an app and do that? Why did the taxi company not create Uber? Because they have no vision. And they don't see that this technology is eating industries. Does this make sense? Soother Zeal is a very different business model. It's not based on real estate. It's based on an app, and then you scale the app worldwide. Airbnb, Uber, same sort of difference, right? Soothe and Zeal. The therapists make more money. The therapists are contractors in that plan. You might make a little bit more per hour, but they want you to go back through Soother Zeal. And what happens is, does Soother Zeal pay for your car, your mileage? Your gas. You can, because now you're, yeah. But it's a different business model. Can you make it more effective than the competition? Can you make it cheaper than the competition? Can you make it more convenient? Can you make it stand out as a brand? Do people have like a distinct brand of Uber now? Yeah. Nike. 
Massage envy? A little bit. A little bit. Let's get back to work.